support our coverage using Blueberry, the community that gives creators the ability to make money, get detailed audience measurements, and host their audio and video. Get 30 days to try out the service using promo code BLUEBERRY004. That's B-L-U-B-R-R-Y-004. So what I want to do is uh, introduce Harold Smeeman. I hope I pronounced that correct. Did I get it right? Uh, oh, okay, sorry. Go ahead. I'm the other, other co-founder. Uh, so oh, Harold oh. actually went to the airport to pick up our lost luggage. Oh. Uh, oh. So they lost all our marketing material. So we've been trying to get it back for the past day, basically. Oh, you know, don't you hate that when the airlines do that? Well, we got a chance here to get people to uh, figure, uh, get a handle on what you guys do. So it's la 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 La, okay, introduce the company. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So yeah, so the company is La La Land, so I'm one of the co-founders, so I'm yeah. chief data officer. Uh, and what we do is uh, create synthetic models that don't exist for the e-commerce industry. So we use generative AI uh, to generate photorealistic human models uh, and then offer that to fashion brands and e-commerce brands uh, to basically speed up the whole process. So how does that actually work? What is the process? Because when people say, say AI now, they kind of like, okay, I've heard AI a lot, but what is that... What does that process look like when you work with a customer? From the customer side, it's more like, uh, well, let, let's kind of wind it back, I guess. Sure. Let me quickly explain the tech in a kind of short way. So basically, sure. you can imagine there's two neural networks. Uh, one's a detective and one's a forger. So the detective is actually the one that sees real models. Uh, and it's, it's basically a classifier that can tell that's a real person or not. Sure. And then the, the forger has never actually seen a human. It starts off with a random noise. And over millions and millions of iterations, it reaches a point where the detective basically can't tell anymore if it's forgery or it's real. And that's the point of photorealism. And that's how we actually create these models. And then from the brand perspective, from like a fashion brand, uh, we offer them like a complete portfolio of already you know, generated com like models. And then for example, you need, you know, uh, let's say, a middle-aged uh, plus size model. Right. Uh, that's what they select on our platform. Uh, they select the hairstyle, if they want makeup or not. And then the next step is basically they upload the garments. So let's say a t-shirt, uh, they specify I want this to be tight, tight fit, loose fit. And then within 72 hours, we deliver the finished product. Which really? Which they can publish on their website. So it's complete design of the, that's amazing. So do, do they, what is the, so they upload in probably the initial base design of the t-shirt and then you guys do the fitting or is the, are you guys actually designing the design? No, so they upload already something that's designed. So sure. What we call pack shots. So what they do is, uh, it's called the ghost mannequin effect. So it's like a green screen mannequin where they put the t-shirt on. Sure. So it creates this floating effect. And that's what we get as input from different poses, basically. Yeah. And that's what, what we use to map to the models that they selected in the previous step. Okay. Uh, and most of the time, the brands already have this uh, before you know they go into mass production. They do these pack shots so they can show uh, retailers if they're actually interested or not. Yep. Before they, you know, they go up, manufacture thousands of copies of that uh, the shirt. Right. Or what we're seeing nowadays is also a lot of brands are like moving to fully 3D design. So they basically they're already designing the clothing in 3D software. Sure. Uh, and that's already also good input for our software. We can use that already to basically uh, map uh, to the model. So the so you delivered to them an image that they can put on their e-commerce site as well, or where is that data used mostly by the yep. by the end end client? So primarily, it's on the product detail page on their websites on e-commerce. And the idea is basically we can offer uh, you know different skin complexions, different body types. So for example, when you change from S to M, you see a different model appear. Okay. Uh, you can also try and match it to your skin color, so you can have a better idea. You know, if what the color it matches. Like, right. And then this way, we're trying to reduce basically the return rates. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what they do with it on their website. It's up to them. Sure. We deliver kind of right now, uh, th like an image basically. Yeah. And then they can yeah use it for marketing. They can use it for you know product detail page. Yeah. Uh, and so on. Is the actual generated image is not a real person though, right? It is a AI generated image of a person, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this person, you wouldn't find them anywhere in in the real world, and that's also for for a lot of brands that work in different countries. Sure. It's really good for. You know, from copywriting perspective, in terms yeah. of they don't have to manage, you know, 30 different uh, copyright licenses for different regions, and, and uh, it's kind of speeds up the whole process. Can you see examples of the end product on your website? Yeah, on our website, if you go, uh, basically, all the models on our website are basically our generated models. Right. Uh, yeah, so you guys it can play around with there as well. There's some uh, little... Demo. So how's the how how long have you guys been working on this and are you have you come to market are you working with a number of clients already? So 
we've been doing this for roughly two years and uh, we do have clients uh, basically we, beforehand we had quite a lot of POCs and basically kind of starting off now we're trying to aim for recurring revenue uh, but yeah because we're kind of coming out of the R&D phase where we know we spent a year and a half basically actually getting the generation to work right uh, to a high enough level and now we're basically kind of moving to you know expanding into uh, getting brands on board so, so is your goal of the show to do that is to get brands on board yeah so we're trying to you know kind of put our foot into the U.S. market, yep. uh, talk to American brands as well. Where are you? Fr- or where's the company based out of? So we're actually based in Amsterdam, okay, in the Netherlands, and uh, yeah, that's where we started. Uh, and now we're kind of trying to see uh, a more global uh, picture. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I think we're getting to the point where now they're able to do audio reproduction of voices, which is kind of scary in its own self. But now you've got AI generated humans, essentially, um, that. From a realistic standpoint, where do you think, can, if I look at that image, can I tell that that is not a real person? So we actually had like a, in, in our slide deck, we would sometimes throw in a real model in between the fake models to see if people were able to uh, differentiate. And most of the time they can't. And sometimes they even point out the real model and like start to look for problems where, they, okay, I can tell that she's fake because of this and that. Uh-huh. Where it's actually they're pointing at the real model and they're, okay, her nose is like a bit too off, but it's actually a real person that they're, like how to say criticizing right. not, not the generated model so like in the in that sphere in the 2d sphere it's pretty or like in, in a non-video uh environment it's pretty yeah. hard to tell uh video i think it still needs some time to catch up in terms of generated video you yeah you can find little glitches here and there sure but with 2d images it's pretty hard to tell that is amazing you know to think but you know i guess too they're gonna if, if they can make a artificial generated, and I don't know if I'm using the right word, an artificially generated human as a digital image, I guess I can do a pretty good job making a, not that I need a, I actually need a clone. I need a real clone, but not a, <laughs> not a digital picture of me. But that is pretty cool. If I think about that for a second, in the use, where else can this go? So we've been, uh, well, for now we focus on kind of the e-commerce, but we've p- had people from the gaming industry reach out, basically, you know, for creating a population of diverse, uh, how do you say, NPCs oh, for video yeah, games. Yeah. So that's one sphere. Marketing, so for example, you know, generating slightly different advertisements based on the actual person viewing the advertisement. That's right. So they would see different people in the advertisement based on, you know. Based on the targeting of the magazine yeah, exactly. or wherever there may be. So there's still qu- quite a lot of things that we need to explore and see, you know, where we can apply this. Uh, for now, you know, we still have a pretty small team at the moment, so sure. we kind of focus on the fashion industry. Yeah. But, you know, like uh, in the future, you, you never know where this is going to go. So do you think, let me just ask an ethical question. Are you ethically, do you have to disclose this is a digitally rendered model? Do you think you're, do, that's a question. Because people are going to see the models and they're not going to know, are we, are we in a point where we're going to have to designate that something's digitally rendered versus real? In my opinion, I don't, well, Kind of depends on the brand if they really want to let one of the, I guess their customers know if they think that's maybe a risk to you know losing potential customers right. in the future. From our side, I think we, for us is basically since you can't differentiate it for us, I think it's not really an issue. Right. But some brands have expressed okay maybe our, our you know our clients wouldn't really want to you know think this is real but it's sure. actually fake. And then maybe a little sticker or something. This is like a synthetic. Yeah. It might be also pretty cool uh, in terms of okay, like most, most people don't know it, but most car commercials today are completely CG. There's, yeah. They're very rarely even using a real vehicle in many of the, it's all digitally rendered. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of digitally rendered stuff now in the, I guess for the non-physical flesh world. Yeah. So that's very, very interesting. Very, very cool. So folks, if you want to find out more information, go check this out. I'm definitely going to go check it out because I want to see the images myself. We go over to Lala, L-A, I think I pronounced this right, L-A-L-A, L-A-N-D dot A-I. So, yeah, lalaland.ai. And uh, definitely check it out. I hope you guys get your marketing materials. I know how yeah. aggravating that can be. Yeah, fingers crossed. But I think we'll be fine. Oh, the good. most important thing is we're here. So it's, Yeah, uh, that's the main thing, yeah. too, right? And have the, show the website and everything else. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Have a great show. Thank you. You, too. TPN CES 2022 coverage is executive produced by Michelle Mendez. Technical directors are Kurt Corliss and Adam Barker. Associate producers are Nancy Ertz and Maurice McCoy. Interviews are edited by Joe Minnie. Hosts are Marlo Anderson, Todd Cochran, Scott Ertz, 
Christopher Jordan, Danielle Mendez, and Alante Sparks. Las Vegas Studio provided by HC Productions. Remote Studio provided by Plug Hits Productions. This has been a Tech Podcast Network production. Copyright 2022.